Hello, hello, welcome back to another video on the channel where healing and spiritual growth are front and center. This video shout out goes to a Jan Hotch. Thank you for your continued support. And I want to cover some of this because I know a lot of uh, survivors, when a narc blocks, okay, their target, they don't do it forever. All right, they, they, you know, overall reason why they unblock is to Hoover, yes. All right, so many of us, we become familiar with that, but there are other reasons why they will unblock. See, that's the difference between chosen empaths and the narcissistic abusers. See, the chosen empaths, once we block, we're done. <laughs> that is it. And we remember it, and we're done. You know, we, we block it and forget it. <laughs> okay? That's just the way it is. When God reveals an enemy, we block it and let it go. And we do not unblock. All right, so... Keep that in mind. Now, some of us, you know, did uh, uh, have to do some testing of the spirit, and then we block. So, it goes that way, too. Okay, so those of us who have the assignment of, of turning these narcs into case study, just keep that in mind, all right? If that's part of your assignment, then that's a little bit you'll do that gathering of data before you block <laughs> and delete, okay? So, that's what we do. And so, well, I've said many times that if a narcissistic abuser does not want to be turned into a case study or analyzed, best stay away, because <laughs> that's exactly what we're going to do. <laughs> if one comes across our path and has some new red flags or some red flags that we have, that we pick up on and are a, like a variation, remember, the different flavors of these narcissistic abusers, right? So once we come across one, it has some different flavors to it, we're like, ooh, case study, because that's what's going to happen. All right, I'm just here. I'm going to go ahead and put that out there one more time, you know, I, or as many times as I need to, for that matter. Okay, that if an narcissistic abuser does not want to be analyzed, they don't want to be turned into a case study, CHA is not the place for you. <laughs> yeah, don't be sending me no DMs and stuff like that because I will do that. Okay, absolutely. I will turn you into, into I will turn them into a case study, if, you know, when if I start to detect a different flavor. Kind of like I did with that video that's on the channel, you all, where nine red flags of, of narcissistic abuser, because that came from a Facebook case study. Because mm -hmm. it was a little bit of a different flavor with some classic stuff in there, but a little bit of a different flavor. So that's, that's that. That's how that works. Okay, for anybody who's wondering. <laughs> okay. But why the narc unblocks you? Yes, big big part of it is because they're, you know, they're hoovering. Absolutely. But here are some other things to ponder over as to why a narcissistic abuser will unblock their target, okay? All right, one, okay, to see if you will notice, all right? They want to see if you will notice it first. So if you notice it, then they want to see if you'll take the bait by reaching out to them. Mmm, yes, to break no contact. That's what the enemy wants. Right, right, to see if he can get you sucked back into some more of their webs of deceit. Right, there you go. All right, so to see if you'll notice and take the bait. All right, that's really a big one right there, why they will unblock their target. Then another one is to see, uh-huh, to see if what, you know, to see what, there you go, what the target is up to. To see what you're doing. Remember, narcissistic abusers are very nosy. Right? They cannot help themselves. They are very nosy. So they'll unblock their target to see what their target is up to, mm -hmm, what they're doing. And then another thing is to see if, this kind of reminds me, like, from in criminology, how we find out about, you know, some of these, uh, you know, uh, criminals will revisit the crime scene. Mm-hmm. Well, very, very similar to that. So when uh, if a narcissistic abuser unblocks their target, what they're doing is they're checking to see if the abuse they dished out, the mind games and all of that, they want to see if that worked. It's kind of like them revisiting a crime scene, okay? That's exactly how these narcissistic abusers operate. They want to see. So I, oh, sure, 
Have any of them checked in on, on the YouTube channel or, or anywhere else? Absolutely. I'm sure they have. They can't help themselves. <laughs> okay? They can't help themselves. They want to see if what they did worked to destroy their target. They want to see if their target is suffering. They want to see if, oh yeah, and once they see their target is not suffering like they were hoping their target is, uh, was, you know, would be suffering in their mind, once they see that, oh yeah, that, mm -mm, they don't like that. But that's too bad, all right, because see, God restores all, all right, that's it, bottom line. And remember something also, fellow warriors, that if a narcissistic abuser unblocks you to do that, to see if you are suffering or to see if you you are are having a, um, to see where you're at kind of thing in, in, in your healing, they want to see if you have gotten past a certain point. They want to see where you're at. And, you know, a lot of it, just their little way of seeing if there's any way that they can you know, weasel the way back in kind of thing, okay? So it all ties into that, you know, the first point I made about them to see if you notice and take the bait. They want to see if they can find a way to weasel back in. Because remember, to a narcissistic abuser, their targets are objects, okay? So when they're done, when the shiny wears off, they put their target up on a shelf, like, and block their target, okay? But then... They get bored, okay, it could be a year later, it could be six months later, at the time of it, doesn't matter. And at some point, if they, if the narcissistic abuser unblocks the target, then it's because they want to see if there's anything, you know, what's going on with the target, how's the target doing, is the target suffering, what's the target up to, uh, you know, all, all kinds of different things going through their minds they want to see. And then, of course, to revisit. Mm -hmm, the crime scene and see if their target uh, is not doing well or whatever. They want to see that. And so, cause they, they, it's like they need, they're checking in for the enemy. All right? They're checking in because remember, the devil is not omnipresent. Mm -mm -mm -mm. That's why you've got to have the human host with the demon spirit doing his bidding, you know, the flying monkey narcs. Right? That's why you've got to have them because they, so they can check in on the chosen one. All right? Uh huh. To see if anything that they did actually worked, okay, to act, to steal, kill, and destroy. Uh huh. That's a that's a huge one right there. All right. So, uh, let's see. Yeah. And and when I said to see where you're at, they want the the enemy wants to see where you're at in the healing process to see if anything he tried from the past might still work in the present. Be mindful of that, okay? If they unblock you, and then they, let's say they start initiating conversation. Yes, this is why, you know, this is why a lot of us have suggested, if you see that the narcissistic abuser unblocked you across, on a social media site, that's your opportunity to get in there and block them and then be done. Because otherwise, at some point, they may try to reach out. So there's your tip right there. Once you notice, you know, take the take note of this. If you notice that the narcissistic abuser has unblocked you, that's your opportunity to go in there and block them lickety split and be done with it. So that you don't give them that opening to weasel the way back in. Uh, I know that sounds easier said than done, but you believe me, it gets easier going forward. Okay, now as far as the hoovers that we get on our phones, because <laughs> we know how these narcissistic abusers, you like to, sp mm, yeah, spoof numbers. Mm hmm yep, they sure do. And so they want to see if we will answer. So that's why many of us, listen, you all, if you call the business phone, okay, for those of you who don't know that you can contact CHA, okay, you can contact the ministry and me at, the phone number or email listed right there on the website. Sound at the bottom. You have con I've got contact information. Okay, so that way you all know. But I will advise you know let me know. You know leave a message because if it's an unknown number, okay, if it's an unknown number, I may not pick up right away. All right, because of the Hoovers. 
Uh huh. And of course, spammers and scammers and vultures out there. So I highly encourage you, if you are comfortable sending a text message, you can do that to that, to the business phone. Okay, to the ministry phone. You can you can send a text. Let me know that you are a fellow survivor or you know a fellow warrior, and you are inquiring about such and such. Okay. Now let me know that that's you. And then that way we we can negotiate maybe a, a good time to have a conversation, you know, via phone or email, whatever. Email anytime. You know, just send an email. Just make sure you let me know who you are. And also it's great because I thank you fellow warriors for letting me know that when you send me an email, you say this is so-and-so from YouTube. So it's something like that. So I'll know where, okay, the, the contact information for Consulting for Heightened Awareness is out there, okay, obviously, and in the podcast. So, naturally, you know, as a business owner, also, we're going to have, you know, vultures and things like that. So, I don't answer unknown numbers. And also because of Hoovers. Yes, we still get them. <laughs> we do. We just ignore them. And so, oftentimes, I advise, if you do call, you know, please do leave a voicemail, okay? Leave a voicemail and a possible, uh, a good time to call you back. Okay, and I will always return the within 24 hours. Okay, so or at the specified day and time that you leave in the message. All right, and again, let me know who you are, and that you from YouTube, Instagram, Patreon, uh, to Facebook or what have you. If you you know contact me via the business phone, and you leave a message, let me know from where and who you are, and then you know brief brief your question or inquiry or what have you, and then a good callback date and time, all right, so that I'll make sure, you know, and then it may not hurt to let me know what time zone you're in, all right, you all, because I can look it up and figure it out from, to, uh, for the time zone that I will be on, okay, so obviously if it's 2 a.m. Eastern Standard Time, I'm not going to call you back. <laughs> I'm asleep. <laughs> uh, I said, well, I'll let y'all know that. <laughs> so, you know, we can negotiate, okay? That's, that's what it's all about when negotiate a good time to, to, to chat. And, and you can get your question and, and inquiries answered, okay? And I wanted to remind everybody of that one. But, you know, because of the Hoovers and things like that, I'm not going to answer unknown numbers. You know, every once in a while, if it if it looks similar to a number that I do uh, frequently have contact with, I may answer it. And oftentimes, it's a sales pitch. And so, I uh, no thank you, click, you know, that kind of thing. But uh, for the most part, you know, that's how that works. All right? But I will, you know, if I don't answer, it's not that I'm ignoring it, if I don't know the number. Because <laughs> the narcs out here, oh gosh, yeah, they, you know, they listen. They know technology too, okay? Maybe, maybe not all of them, but a lot of them who do know, who are tech savvy, they know how to spoof numbers, make numbers up and stuff like that and try to hoover and harass, you know, uh, you know their targets, okay, if you will. And so we, we always have to be mindful of that. Not be afraid of it. We learn to ignore it, okay? We learn not to chase our tail and change our phone number every time we get a Hoover. No, that's what they want us to do. Because we realize something, that going forward, once we've changed that phone number enough, the narc that's doing the Hoovering is only going to be one that actually has that number. Okay, now as far as the work, the business phone, it could be any narc. <laughs> I'm just doing the hoovering. As far as the personal phone, I pretty much can narrow that down to previous NARC co-workers and NARC family members, perhaps. I can narrow it down with that. As far as the work, the, because the business and ministry phone is out there, it could be any NARC you know, for that, that you read about in the real events of narcissistic abuse. Yeah, that's, my, that's the story for you all. Okay, so for anyone who's wondering how all of this came to be, you know, we had a question um, in one of the podcast episodes about that, okay, on, on how all of this came to be, how I, uh, you know, uh, 
got into all of this, <laughs> you know, to help y'all heal and grow spiritually and things like that. And so, real events of narcissistic abuse, you know, that's the Amazon copy that you see back there, okay? But they get a larger print version right on the website or the easy peasy PDF download as well. And so, in that book, it's just, it's not going to re-traumatize you all. No, we put it together in a, in a very... Uh, I could say strategic way to keep it on point to the red flag that we missed and then I share with you the aftermath of the straw that broke the camel's back and things like that but that book is also a walk with me on my journey into God's reality so it's a great way to get to know me and more about this work and also how it came to be how all of this came to be all right so that's that's for those who have not heard that yet and for those who need that reminder you know so there you go and all three of all three of my books are also on amazon okay in, in paperback and they're also on the website in hard copy and digital okay pdf and then those the three books are also available on kindle and then if you happen to find the draft to digital links for the uh, first two books, okay, if you happen to find those, that just means that those two books are also available on like Scribe and several other ebook platforms using Draft to Digital. So there's several different ways to get the first two books, okay. The recent one, Real Event, is website and Amazon, okay, those are the two places. I have not put that on Draft to Digital, just so everybody knows, okay. All right, so that's that, and if you have any questions, you all, you know, hey, don't hesitate to reach out, okay, but why a narc will unblock you, okay, I just gave you the several reasons why, and we, we, we learned this, you know, so again, as a reminder, okay, so you don't miss it, is that if you notice that they unblocked you, that's your opportunity, Okay, to get right in there and block them and be done and not give them, not let them have any opening to try and weasel their way back in. All right, so there you go. So, and for additional information, insight, and other good stuff, you can check out these videos right here. Sending love and light to all fellow warriors. Thank you for watching and for your support. Until next time, let's show some gratitude to the Heavenly Father and you keep being you. In Jesus' name, amen.